Hello traders, it's Thomas here from Vega FX, and in this video we're going to be covering over volume, how to use volume to differentiate between high probability order blocks, and also how to use volume to determine if you can take trades from a Asia high or Asia low, because I know a lot of traders do actually avoid these regions, but they just do so because they've heard someone else say it, they don't actually know why they're avoiding it, and in what instances they don't have to avoid it so this video should help you with that um i do want to just mention guys i was using the wrong audio input for the recording of this video so you will actually hear my laptop buzzing in the background um uh, so i do apologize um for that i can't be bothered to uh record it all again but um rest be assured in my next video it will be sorted out um but yeah hope you enjoy the video So just looking at the chart now, we've got a Asia session. Now you can see the Asia session even without using this trading session indicator just because you can see the volume change. So this is the US session. We can see as we come to spread hours around 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. the spread uh, and the volume, uh, sorry, the volume goes minuscule and the spread will actually increase you can see all the orders withdrawn from the markets you can see that price really freezes up and starts to move like this the volume does pick up slightly during the asia session which starts at 11 pm but you can see that compared to the us session it is very low and you can see that the volume basically maintains um this same level for the majority of it now it can differ which we will cover in a second but you can see and if we just use our rewinds tool you can see that here is where the volume starts picking up uh you can see that there's actually been liquidity built up over the asia session um in the form of manipulation um, on this trend line you can see price rejecting of it so there will be traders trading long from this level thinking that the banks have come in but there or simply because this is a third touch um, on a trend line and it's ironic because I know there's a, a lot of trading communities such as Falcon that actually trade from uh, the third touch on the uh, trends line thinking that it is going to reverse from there but in my community I actually teach the complete opposite you'll actually find that when you get this third touch on a trend line, that will normally be where price decides to sweep through it. Um, now, that's not to say that banks are uh, intentionally trying to sweep retail traders' orders. It's just uh, a matter of they are just getting it at the wrong place at the wrong time and they are um, getting swept. But you can see price sweeps down. This is the first um, price action that stems from the European banks. Um, until then, they, I mean, there are probably European banks within this time, but um, it's going to be mainly Asia banks trading that. And you've then got, where's my rewind tool gone? Price comes back in to this range. And we witness a breakout. So you can see that the volume is not only high, we also have this imbalance in price. And if we draw a trend line or a structure break by here you can see that the order flow is now reversed so we've got negative order flow um, by here you can see this by these structure breaks to the downside so that's negative order flow order flow now reverses becomes positive with this structure break with this being such a high volume candle we can reasonably assume that there is going to be high volume um, by here. There's going to be lots of orders at this price level. In fact, I'm sure if we draw a volume range, we'll draw it from by here. Well, to be fair, you'll actually find that because there's so many candles by here, it'll actually look at the volume by here. But we can see that this segment in time 7 a.m in the morning 
that is where the volume came into the market. So we can reasonably assume that within this candle it are the massive orders that were originally placed by banks causing the imbalance, breaking the structure to the upside. So this is where price will not only be manipulated back to to fulfill the rest of the bank's orders, but that's where there is an amount of orders there that will cause another imbalance in the market which will shoot price up because this is where the orders are, the price will come back to it, the imbalance will be sufficient enough to reverse price because there will be more buy orders than sell orders at this point in the market. So when the sell orders drop price down, it'll hit the zone, fulfill the rest of the bank's orders or at least um, a lot more of them before moving up. So what are we going to do, guys? We are going to draw a order block by here. Um, I'm not going to refine it for the sake of this video. This is more just um, an example. But we can see the price comes into it. T tell you what, if we did go onto the two minute chart, you'll actually find the price. And I, I don't like to refine it like this, guys, um, to be honest, because you'll find that sometimes price will come back down into the wick. But if you did keep your order block drawn by here, refines the top of it. I find that is the best for keeping you within trades. Still lowering your stop loss to increase your position size, but it does still give you that leeway just in case price does decide to come down further. And then we're going to witness the next break of structure with the next load of imbalance. Like I said, there's enough orders by here to reverse price and cause a new imbalance and price has then come back up to here and as this has now been mitigated this is left unmitigated guys so what can we do that would be the last counter trend candle go down to the two minute that would be the last counter trend candle before all imbalance you could even use the most extreme trend candle. I mean, they're both pretty much the same, so it's not going to matter. It's still going to come into our zone. You can see it. If you did actually have your stop loss below there, you would have actually been taken out. Uh, within my community, I do always recommend having it slightly below. I know there are other mentors that do literally draw from the very low of the order block, but from my back testing, especially if you're... Um, trading with prop firms and you've got drawdown restrictions you want to be kept in as many trades as possible even if your position size is going to be slightly smaller because you've got a larger stop loss it's actually better than going into drawdown drawdown is a trader's um, worst enemy um, especially if you're um, trading with someone else's capital such as using a prop firm if you're going into drawdown you're running the risk of hitting one of their drawdown restrictions and obviously if you've got a live account that means that you're going to lose all your funding um, and if you're doing a challenge it means you're going to fail the challenge whereas if you're targeting lower rewards trades but higher strike rate then obviously you're less likely to run into that um, restriction <clears throat> so we'll just uh, play price and you can see because this trade actually happened yesterday and you'll actually know that uh, myself and other traders in this community did get into this. You'll see that if you were locking in behind structure, you would have actually been taken out by here. Myself, we actually targeted this imbalance by here. You can see all this imbalance on, uh, sorry, is mitigated. This imbalance isn't um, mitigated. So we actually had our order block drawn from this um, I, uh, although that's not a counter trend candle, you'll actually find that there will be a bullish trend, ca uh, bullish candle within the wick, and we actually targeted that, and you can see that price actually does come up after building up liquidity. So again, I, I know this bit video is not about liquidity, but this is just one large schematic of building up and accumulating orders for the banks to withdraw price. Um, but uh, yeah, price reverse from there. Um, I believe it does actually come back up. Yeah, so it does come back up. So if you add it in the wick, you would have actually been um, taken out of a nice profit. I think we made a 9R return on this trade. 
So just another example, guys. This is from the 2nd of May. Now, whereas in the previous example, it was high volume at the Asia low. In this case, we have low volume by here. And we find that price actually sweeps through it. And the same with the Asia high. Low volume, slightly higher than the rest of the market, mind you, but still very low. And you can see that the volume increased by here, this would have simply been the banks um, grabbing liquidity before moving the price downwards. Um, now, in my strategy, you'll know that I still do mark these extreme regions because I know that even though price is likely to sweep through them, that doesn't mean you can't trade from them. We can anticipate the sweep and then catch a confirmation on a sub time frame or a reversal on the time frame we're using to analyze. You can see here, price swept, broke up, reversed order flow, and actually moved there. Obviously, the order flow, overall order flow is downwards. Price does actually continue going downwards. So if you did get there on a confirmation trade, yes, it would have been pretty high risk reward even moving up to there, because you would have been on the one minute chart, for example, you would have captured a high risk reward trade. Uh, you would have either been taken out at a uh, decent profit, say three or four, maybe even five R, um, or you would have been taken out break even. But this trade, there would have been a confirmation orders in within this um, price action, and that would have obviously still been running at this point, and you could have targeted imbalance down by here, um, or even lower. Well, actually, that's been mitigated. So you'd probably be looking at the imbalance by there. Um, all of this has been mitigated already. So this is another markup that I made yesterday. I've been looking to make a reel on Instagram for the first time, so I wanted to annotate this nicely. Um, but as you can see by here, guys, you've got negative order flow. You've got this order block here, which I did draw. Like I said, it's drawn in a dark red just because I'm not looking to trade there. I'm only anticipating price to reverse from there and potentially sweep before respecting, as you can see it does. And the same with there. Now, this order block is pretty high volume, not as high as this one. You can actually see that the volume is higher during that region and you have this clear manipulation. You can see it by there. You can see it by here and you can even see it by there. It's just inducement to get price back up to this region, guys. And you can see that price does mitigate. I wouldn't have had an order set by here. I mean, you could have. You've got clear manipulation there. Uh, but I was obviously sleeping, so I, I didn't actually uh, think to have an order set there. But you can see, and what I did notice the next day is price did actually come in to mitigate that. And then you can see this rejection. And then during the London Open, you get this breakdown in structure, this reversal of order flow, multiple structure breaks, and you get this imbalance. And the volume at this region is obviously much higher than the rest of the Asia session. So you can reasonably assume that within this region of price, this is a two minute refined five minute order block. You can reasonably assume that there is enough orders within this order block to cause an imbalance and reject price. You can see this liquidity built up by here, by here, price comes in, tags lovely into the, the zone. I'll just go into the two minute chart just to show you. Again, not too sure why my chart is doing that, but you can see that it's come beautifully in this. I mean, you can even find that if you went into the one minute chart, you'll find that it would have uh, hit that lovely as well. And that was a, Really high returning trade, 16.57 at uh, 57R. And this just happens a lot, guys. I, I mean, it is just one ingredient of the pie. Uh, you can't just solely go uh, by volume. Uh, you must look at manipulation, not only to see if price has been induced back to your zones that you've drawn, but also to check to see if your zone is actually drawn at a manipulation point and if you're actually drawing your zone from an inducement point for a, a further uh, more historic supply or demand zone you also want to be looking at imbalance you want to be looking at swing highs or swing lows because those are going to be higher volume on uh, a higher time frame um 
the volume that we look at, guys, it's simulated from price action um, and from the broker, it's for direct. So it's not accounting for the whole of the Forex markets volume. Um, we don't know the volume of the intrabank market. That's the, the actual market that banks use. So we can only use this as a guideline. We can't say with a absolute uh, definitive um, assumption that there is going to be um, orders there. This is only going to increase the probability of your trades. This isn't going to be a surefire method. You have to use this in line with other um, other things there, other um, pieces of the puzzle um, to actually get into a stage where you're actually getting into profitable trades um, c consistently. Uh, like I said, you want imbalance, manipulation, and volume, and you want to be looking at structure. Um, but uh, yeah, quick video, guys. Um, again, I, I know my content has been lacking in terms of videos, um, especially on YouTube. But it is probably the one that's lacking the most. With Instagram, I can um, upload daily. Um, YouTube videos, it does take a bit more time. And as I'm recording content for the course, um, it's just not something I do have as much time to do at the moment. But rest be assured, once the course is finished, I can look at uh, pumping videos out literally two to three times a week. And we'll go much more in depth on some of the other videos that I've covered already, such as market structure and um, extreme order blocks, which is the... Um, the icing on the cake really for my strategy but um community's going really strong guys um it's at nearly well approaching 700 members i believe um and we've got a lot of people in there um i i know of quite a few already that have passed literally from just um being within the community learning from m myself and others in the community it's not just me um blabbering on about my own methods you've got other traders in there trading similar methods um smc methods um and they're all sharing ideas and helping one another so i do really recommend just jumping on it's completely free of charge we're just a community sharing ideas and growing together um you've also got my um, colleague and business part partner kelton who also trades um smc although he does use a fractal method slightly different to mine but um he's also um, helping um, people out that um, want to trade his uh, method. There's no right or wrong way of trading um, SMC. Um, there are profitable methods of doing it in it numerous ways, and you need to find the best style that suits you. Um, and our course that we're making together will actually outline both of our methods, just so uh, you have um, multiple choice to choose from. And It'll actually outline how to make your own strategy if you did want to um, to um, go down your own routes there and back test and formulate your own plan. Um, so that's me, guys. Uh, it's um, good to be back and good to be speaking to the community. I've been ill for a while. Uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.